Hi, this is Phoenix Genesis for phoenixgenesis.com and our two YouTube channels, Phoenix Genesis and Fry Cam. So finally I put it together. Hopefully there's enough light outside. I can show you this. Uh, pack everything you need to survive the Pacific Crest Trail. Five pounds, people. Five pounds. You don't need a lot. And uh, I could go even lighter and compress things better. I just kind of whip this together. But I want to show you uh, everything. This is with your cook kit, your fire kit. Uh, full comfort, full survival, and technology. Um, I didn't weigh uh, the phone in here because the phone is a wearable. I always leave it on my belt. So uh, if you want to, you know, add my uh, phone and throw in the hat, the sunglasses, the buff, you're gonna have. You call. You can call it six pounds. So if people want to get fussy, of course I would not wear jeans and I wouldn't wear a cotton poly T-shirt. I would wear a polyester shirt and I would wear polyester. Shirt shorts but I would wear shorts with a belt and pockets and and just running shoes so let's uh, dive into the pack before it gets dark uh, first and I'll, I'll uh, do a chart with all the different weights later uh, again this isn't necessarily what I'm gonna bring I bring all kinds of different things I'm pretty comfortable with a lot of different setups now I've been hiking the Pacific Crest Trail for several years so uh, but I wanted to show you uh, also look at my uh, 14 liter uh, running uh, hydration pack and showing how you can fit things in there. I just want to give you a different idea. So this is a Sea to Summit bag. It is um, water resistant. I don't want to say waterproof, but it's water resistant, which is great. Um, you know, can't be enough protected with the water. So let's just dive in and see what's in here. One by one. And again, if you pack it nicer, you know, make some a little sew in a few little compartments and things, it won't be as bulky, but I just threw it together quickly. So first off, we have, I have three systems in here, just a little Ziploc bag. This is my Diddy uh, survival bag and go there. Then um, this is it. I don't carry more than um, like uh, two liters of water. So this is one liter and I'll show you how I carry the other liter. And I will usually put these in my uh, Nike golf shorts that I wear and they'll go one in each front pocket. I don't, you know, I could strap them to the front of the pack, but I just don't like uh, my vision obstructed. I don't want the water there. I do also have a hand, little handhold running uh, contraption that I could put in, and have one of these in my hands. Or I could also, uh, I have some mesh pockets from REI and I could hook those to the uh, belt and carry the water bottles that way very versatile and again these things compress right down I did another video on why you don't need smart water bottles there we go nice and compressed and I squashed them with my foot and blew them up in this, uh, Northern California this summer and I never had a problem that's it one blow and they're good to go so um, next up um, you know uh, if you take time to build your shelter, you don't need um, a huge pad. You know, if you good picky with your campsite placement, this is my sip pad. This is my um, ref reflective um, uh, backing when I'm at, when I have a campfire, uh, and this is also what I sleep on. This thin pad, and you, it, it's full body. It was great for taking naps on the Pacific Crest Trail. You can fold it in half and fold it in half again if you just want like a torso and throw your pack under your legs. So it becomes kind of uh, nice and thick right here. So anyway, that is a multi-use item. It was a dollar at the dollar store. Next up, um, get this stuff out here. These I don't bother putting in any uh, waterproof container because they are waterproof. A bivy sack made by uh, Stay Outside Longer. It's a uh, little bivy right here. Five ounces. Uh, a uh, Sea to Summit poncho tarp. This comes in at eight ounces. Very, very lightweight shelter. And, and a poncho tarp, again, multi-use. I can use it as a poncho. I can uh, wrap myself in it like a burrito. Uh, you know, use it as a poncho. Or I can um, have different shelter configurations. And I can use it for shade in the desert. Uh, and then, last but not least, okay, and see the pack is so light. And you can see the water resistant material inside. 
Now here is my Cita Summit dry bag for the important things I do not want to have wet. So first off, I put this in a little um, separate bag because I may want to pull these little items out and I don't want them to fall. So um, eventually on the Pacific Crest Trail, you're going to need to do laundry. So just some little lightweight uh, shorts or you may want to go swimming and you just want to have some lightweight shorts. So, uh, you know, use whichever ones you want. I just threw these in just to kind of show you. Uh, that's a personal preference. Uh, then my new item, I'm going to get a yeah, actual tactical uh, Afghanistan military schmog, but for now I'm just using this uh, long scarf that I got at a thrift store yesterday. And again, you can look at schmogs and sarongs and scarves. They have like a hundred uh, uses for uh, wilderness survival. Sorry, I was caught on the branch. So these are um, indispensable. And also, um, you know, it takes a place, this is probably the most important thing. This takes a place of like bringing a mid-layer fle fleece or uh, a sweater, because if you kind of get this all in here and sh shove these sides down in here, you're going to be really, really, really warm when you're sleeping. Also blocks out sun. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Look it up. Um, and then uh, compression sleeves. Uh, I can put these on my legs because I wear shorts or I can put them on my arms to keep my arms warm. So those are, I never leave home without those. Um, extra pair of socks, doesn't matter what kind. You can have your darn tufts if you want or um, another wool or any type of polyester sock, not cotton. Uh, these are just some extra polyester ones I threw in. I'll probably take one pair of darn tufts and then one pair of my light one wind jacket. I would never go without the wind jacket. This is a crucial piece of gear. And if it's really cold, you put the compression sleeves on, you put the wind jacket over your down because the down will keep you warm. But if there's wind, it doesn't suck the heat right out. So uh, this jacket's great. I would never hike in my down jacket. It's just too hot. If you have gloves and you have this, you're going to be fine. And that's it for this little bag. So. Uh, moving right along before we lose daylight here uh in this bag again i want to keep my down really really dry so this is the dry bag i could use a trash compactor bag i've had them rip i don't trust them i'd rather use a uh bag that i know is made for specifically keeping my uh down dry i can't risk it you know if i'm out there and i'm wet that's it i'm not carrying a tent or anything you know real big ass tent so anyway uh, jacket, just lightweight. I don't like a heavy one. This is uh, seven ounces. It's some um, Chinese brand I got at Costco, just $20. It's kept me very, very warm. I took it on the Pacific Crest Trail in Northern California and in the desert in April. And I was never cold with this at all. And I didn't overheat. And I actually uh, could move around the morning without sweating. I sweat in my like heavier, more expensive jacket. So uh, here, this is uh, last but not least, uh, this is a Sea to Summit compression sack. I think it's an 8 to 14. These are all 8 to 14 liters. And this is my packable Costco down throw. Uh, at the end of here, I put a couple of these uh, little uh, hair ties here. And I'm able to uh, take the take this and I can um, squish the down, uh, down so that way it actually more down goes in the bottom. Double it over. And I've taken it down to... Um, 30 degrees and I'm not cold and again I can buff up and make a shelter and actually be warmer and I've got the down jacket and the compression sleeves and the wind jacket so I've gone down to um, 20 and I was warm I took it on the PCT in April and this is all I had sleeping on that little pad and it got down the ground got down to 10 degrees at one point and I was I wasn't you know nice and toasty but I was not shivering as well so it was uh, perfect and again this is for survival so that's it and you know if you're really really cold at camp too you can just wrap this around you on top of your jacket and you've got extra warmth while you're uh, milling around and always get a fire going so that's it now let's go and dive into the ditty bag so this is it So electronics, I just carry uh, one cable to charge my phone uh, and one for the uh, charger. Just a little um, 
Belkin or any um, wall plug you want. So that's just uh, the one I have. I do recommend if you're going to have an iPhone, have the iPhone cable. I've taken knockoff cables and they take a lot longer to charge and sometimes they break as well. I do recommend taking two phone cables, even though it's a little um, nominal weight because I did have one of my iPhone cables die in the Sierras and I wasn't able to get all the footage I wanted in 2016. Then I do take the anchor case to keep this, uh, you know, from getting damaged and I do have the anchor uh, I think this is the 10,000 milliamp uh, this is the Qualcomm quick charge 3.0 so I'll probably take the quick charge charger to go with it uh, $40 at Walmart you know because the, the I don't use carry paper maps I use the GPS I use gut hooks for my water know my elevation know where mileage towns resupplies everything I would need campgrounds uh, I hike in these gloves again you can shave more weight in your pack but I like to have two pairs of gloves I like to have these gloves that are finger free because I don't really sweat in the and I use these for just while I'm just hiking and touching things and gathering things so these are just my uh, regular hiking gloves in lieu of sun gloves then um, for my cook pot and when I'm cutting with the knife uh, I prefer to have these thicker more waterproof gloves because I don't want to accidentally cut my hand it's the worst thing you could get septic very quickly in the wilderness so just these little uh, work gloves next up um, par paracord you never ever want to go um, leave without paracord because paracord you're gonna of course you can lash things with it you can um, build a shelter with it uh, I'm gonna use it to tie up my poncho tarp uh, against two trees so paracord you can use it to start fires uh, next up headlamp um, I do keep it in this extra case you could shave more weight if you don't want to uh, you know have the case and just keep it around uh, here this is a hundred lumen uh, it does red and it does white you can make it bright and dim and dim to make it last longer brighter if you need to really see well in a dark area it's got the adjustable top this is the black diamond ion I think it weighs two ounces uh, great headlamp I've been using it every night when I walk my dogs it's absolutely fantastic uh, here um, you know I, again I want this to be full survival so we have a survival whistle and I wrapped a little rubber band around it which I might use to repair things uh, mini little compass uh, actually I'll take another one which is a thermometer and compass the thermometer fell off this one in Northern California uh, and then a couple safety pins because I don't want to sew anything so I just have some pins if I need to dig something you know out like a thorn or something or um, clean my fingernails uh, even a scraper for cleaning your teeth so I have the uh, smaller one that I use for actually my mouth I don't want to put the dirty one in my mouth and then this one uh, I don't carry a trowel because you can use a stick or your knife to dig a cat hole uh, this uh, a little um, a Benadryl in case something bites me that's about all I take you can put now you can take just a couple put some uh, ibuprofen in here if that's what you like aspirin uh, if you have any other medications you need to take allergy um, type of medications or I don't know blood pressure medication whatever you need vitamins you can just put it in here and I like it to be secure if that stuff gets wet it's useless so that's it um, and then in here you could add nail clippers too if you want I probably will throw nail clippers in here now here here's my um, cook kit so cat lid can a little um, eight ounce stove and what's inside my fire starting cook kit this is the lid which is another um, you know tuna fish uh, cat food can that I actually put it in this plastic so it does not um, rip through and cut anything uh, I don't bother with steaks I have a pencil sharpener not only can I make steaks the tree there's trees and twigs everywhere but I can make shavings to start a fire I have used this since 2016 the Sierras and it's fantastic a uh, big mini now uh, I do also take a fire steel normally but since a lot of people aren't used to fire steels I'm not going to include that so uh, you keep the little kids balloon over this because it at altitude these lighters can leak so this will make your fuel last longer and what's really nice too is when you have a fire you're going to want to have water that you could actually douse the fire with so you can take this blow this up this is one liter 
put it over here, dump the water in here, and you can just kind of tie that up with the twisty tie that I have, and I can bring this over so while I'm having my little mini fire going, if I need to douse it quickly so I don't burn the force down, make sure you have a fire permit too. It's 2019, if yours expired last year, go online, get another one, take the test. But anyway, this is good. This gives me an extra a liter of water. So in here, I have three, uh, I actually cut it in half. These are little fire starting cubes. You could use Esbit tablets. I just used the fire starting ones I got at Walmart. I bring 10 matches and I cut out, um, these are just regular matches, cut out the uh, striker from the box. You can, um, you know, use uh, storm proof matches if you want. You know, I just use regular old matches. Just like to have multiple ways to start a fire. I don't want to just have a lighter or two lighters because lighters can fail. I want to have two different types of ways to start a fire. And then um, this is the cup. This is the stove. And you can see the test I ran on that. I'll put that online too. There it is. There's the little stove. And this is, again, a cat food can. You can use the um, Frito bean dip cans. They work as well as the Fancy Feast. It just took a cheap dollar hole puncher. And I didn't do the best job, but it works, you know. And I leave it a little uh, tilted out so that the flame can come. Otherwise, it snuffs it. When you do want to snuff your whole fire, just put that totally on there and it stuffs out. And last but not least, the last of the ditty bag. So again, uh, these twisty ties, I have a total of two of them on the quilt and then two more here because I can actually take my quilt and twisty tie and make different configurations, including a foot box and make it into a full on sleeping bag if it gets really cold. So um, knife, you take any type of knife you want. This is really light, $2 at Walmart. And I like serrated, non-serrated because I can saw and cut with this. So that's it. Uh, a toothbrush just cut it down if you can find a wood one that's better because if you really get desperate you can take the pencil sharpener and make a steak out of this or you could make some shavings to start an emergency fire so uh you know wood that's cut your toothbrush down um i will bring just two little doggy poop bags because uh, right here because I can break these off put them on my feet and make instant little uh, waterproof booties or mitts for my hand You know if I take four I can make mitts for my hands uh, In order I always 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 and I just dropped everything that my bad um, Try to get this done because it's getting dark spoon You can use an expensive $10 uh, titanium spork or you can just use a plastic spoon It doesn't really matter honestly The nice thing about the plastic spoon is if you decide to go stoveless when you're out of the Sierras, again, you don't have to worry about shipping back your uh, titanium spork. Um, you could always get another one at a, you know, a, a store when you're in town. Uh, I bring four of these little, just regular, these are uh, Hanukkah candles. Uh, I thought I had four. I guess I just bought three. And this is to also help start a fire and for light. Uh, chapstick is really great. Um, lots of uses for your zippers, for your mouth, antibiotic. Uh, you know, uh, for anti-chafing, I put them on my feet so I don't get blisters. Lots of use help to start fire. Uh, hand sanitizer because you don't want to get giardia. Uh, a little sponge to clean the pot and, and also yourself. And what I like about this too, you can use it against your tarp or tent and absorb water. Water, absorb water on leaves and um, then you're able to suck the water if you really got desperate in the desert and you can wipe things up with it if you spill something on you uh, clean your pot lots of uses for a small little sponge better much better than a pack towel and last but not least uh, and again you can take this too these are emergency water pouches if you're really desperate you know or you need to gather berries or whatever you want to gather plants to make a meal in, while you're hiking as well so plastic bags are great and I like clear bags I can see through and this is just my little windscreen made out of aluminum foil for my pot and I made it long enough that I could cut a little to put as a cozy underneath the pot or on top of the pot in case I decide to uh, not use the cat food lid and also I could cut a piece of this off and actually wrap some food and cook it in there like if someone gave me a piece of steak or I got like maybe some eggs I wanted to cook or um, you know if you wanted to cook a pop tart you could wrap it in here or a potato or some tortillas so uh, cheese so and also the nice thing about this aluminum foil is I could use it to you know also it's waterproof I can use it to have a bigger um, you know 
you know, kind of tarp to kind of close it up more. And uh, also if I want to also put it on the ground to reflect some more heat back or I have it against the fire to reflect heat after I'm done cooking. So uh, aluminum foil, I took this in the Sierras and I actually like had a giant aluminum foil tent and it was hailing and raining for a week straight and I was, I was fine. I was always dry and I was able to cook with the campfires. So that's it. That's uh, five, about five pounds uh, for everything. And I hope that inspires you to go lighter. You just don't need all these things. Now, uh, I was going to say if someone wants to, last thing they want to whine, complain about the Quilto, which is some Costco down throw, you're not going to be warm enough. I've got the uh, Light and Equipment 20 degree quilt. Well, yeah, you know, if you want a 20 degree quilt, guess what? Uh, the Western Mountaineering one that I have that uh, I used, if you look at my videos, I'll use it as an under and an over quilt in, the, in Northern California in 2018 on the Pacific Crest Trail. It weighs less than this. This is 15 ounces for this nice warm cocoon uh, of fluffy um, wonder. And the uh, the Mountain Hardware, uh, not Mountain, the, la la. Um, the other quilt I have, the, uh, yeah, the Western Mountaineering, sorry, the Mountain Hardware is my wind jacket. The Western Mountaineering one is uh, 13 ounces so it's even lighter than this one i mean if you want to add that extra pound and go for a six pound base weight you could take two and you're going to be really super warm you're going to have so much loft it's just a crazy so uh you, you tie this one up as the sleeping bag and shove the other one in there so that's it i hope it inspires you to go uh ultra light phoenix genesis we're at 20 minutes signing out bye